in his throat. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Bubble, bubble, pop. Bubble, bubble. All right, welcome guys. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for being patient with us. Um, as we're about to start our an absent scientist program, I want to welcome each and every one of you who are joining us today. We really appreciate your presence. So I do hope that you guys will learn something today. All right, so I'm your host, Karine Park Swaby, and I will be taking you throughout this exciting and educational session today. But before we dive into today's program, we'll say a word of prayer because without God, we would not be here today. All right, so bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, as we are gathered here for another session of an afternoon to scientist, we just ask that you just be in the midst of today's session and Whatever topic we see to discuss today, let it be beneficial to each and every one of us here today. Help each and every one of us here to learn something different and to be participative in today's program. In your name I pray, amen. All right. So before I invite Ms. Thomas uh, to engage us in a fun session, I just want to give you guys a few rules. So do not unmute your mic unless you are told to do so. And please keep all your questions uh, until the end of the presentation. And please place your information, your school or your organization that you're joining us from, please place the information in the chat section so we can keep you guys up to date about any other programs that we will be having here at Natural History. Okay, so... Let's start the program in a fun fashion as usual. I'll now invite Ms. Tiona Thomas to engage us in today's Science Fun Zone segment. Tiona, I'll hand over to you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I also want to extend welcome to another session of an afternoon with the sciences. So for our fun zone session for today, I'm gonna to invite you all to participate, including those joining with us on YouTube. Welcome also to another session. So I'm going to share screen. If you all can see my screen, you can just um, type in the chat or give a thumbs up. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so we're going to begin. All right, so as the title states, you know, spot the turtle. Today, you're going to be challenged to spot the turtle in the different pictures. All right, so let's begin. on the 
Okay. So one here and one there. No one's button in terms of so far. Upper lip behind the fishes. Alright. <laughs> Alright, I have um, two more to go. Alright, so already put them on the fishes. Alright, so here we have this one here. This one here. This one here. Okay, thank you so much, Tiona, for that fun segment. I did enjoy it, and I know my participants enjoyed it as well. All right, so guys, right now I would like to present to you our presenter for today, and she is Mrs. Kamar Green Clark, the managing director of Treasure Beach and Turtle Group. And today she will be presenting on turtles and our ecosystem. So I'll now hand over to Mrs. Clark to take the floor and thrill us. Okay, Mrs. Clark, you can go ahead. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So my name is Mrs. Kamara Green Clark. I'm the managing director for the Treasure Beach Turkle Group. We are located on the south coast of Jamaica, and that would be in Treasure Beach. So this afternoon, I will be presenting to you. And let me do a little presentation. I was like a bit back because of my internet connection, so I must apologize. So. I will try to share from my end because I was having some issues sending in my presentation. So let me try to share from my end and see. So I don't know if you're seeing anything. Yes, we're seeing it. Okay, so that's our group logo. And that's Treasure Beach Shark Group. And that's me. So the sorry, sorry. The first question is what are turquoise? Turquoise are reptiles that has a shell covering the body. They are cold-blooded animals and they are vertebrates. So that means they have they also have a backbone. So on this side. Where my cursor is, you will see a turtle and that's the shell on the back. And on the other side, that's just a skeleton showing you what the turtle really looks like from the inside. Okay. So the types of turtles that are found in Jamaica, we have the hawk's bill, and as I go along, I will explain the leatherback, the green sea turtle, and the loggerhead. So for the hawksbill, the hawksbill is the main one that we have here in Treasure Beach. 
So as, as we say Hawks Bill, it talks about the description. So the Hawks Bill turtles has the shape of their mouth is like a hawk. So it's like a beak. Sorry. Sorry. Give me a second, please. I must apologize there. So Hawksbill sea turtles, they have a pointed beak and that's what they are known for. Their shells are very beautiful. So hawksbills are named for their narrow pointy beak. They also have a distinct pattern of overlapping scales on their shells. And that forms a scarlet look on the edge. Their colors are patterned shell, makes them highly valuable and commonly sold in marketplaces. So persons use the hawksbill shells for earrings, bracelets, even glasses frame. They are very beautiful when polished. Our second one is the leatherback. We do not have a variety of leatherback here in Treasure Beach on the South Coast. They are very rare. So the leatherback sea turtle, including their diet and life cycle, lifespan, and more. The leatherback are unique ocean animals, very huge. When we describe them to persons on site, we would say they are like tractor wheels. Their tracks are like tractor wheels. So they are the largest of all sea turtles and one of the largest reptiles on earth. The leatherback turtles range in size from four, point, four feet sorry, to eight feet in length and weigh between 500 to 2,000 pounds. The average adult measures in between five to six feet They are the oldest of all sea turtle species. It has been around for more than 150 million years. They survived the extinction of the dinosaurs and tr tribes until the last several decades when human interactions have made a major toll on them. The next in line would be the green sea turtles. As their names describe, they are green. They are not as large as the hawksbill or the leatherback. So the green sea turtle, also known as the green turtle or black turtle. Sorry. Are you hearing me clearly? Yes, we're hearing it clearly. Okay. I'm sorry. So the green sea turtle is the largest hard shell sea turtle. They are, are unique among sea turtles in that they are herbivores, eating mostly sea grasses and algae. This diet is what gives them gives their fat a greenish color, which is where their name comes from. Green sea turtles, they are found throughout the world, but they are one of the four found here in Jamaica and on the South Coast.
We have next in line the loggerhead. So as they, the name describes, they are loggerhead, their heads are huge. I'll just move on. How do turtles contribute to our ecosystem? So when turtles graze, they increase the productivity and nutrients contained content of seagrass blades. Hawksbill sea turtles allow other species such as corals to colonize and grow by removing sponges from the reef. Nesting sea turtles help beaches by depositing their eggs in the sun. Eggshells and unhatched eggs can provide important nutrients that nourishes dune vegetation, such as beach grasses, which stabilizes dunes and helps to prevent coastal erosion. They also affect the food chain and mineral cycles. How do we protect our sea turtles? Sea turtles are important. Not everybody thinks they are important, but they are just as important as us human beings. Sorry. Just a minute, I'm having a little bit of difficulty here. Sorry, sorry, are you hearing me? I'm having a little bit of difficulty where I am. So is anybody hearing me? Yes, we're hearing you. Okay, sorry. So how do we protect our sea turtles? So we reduce our garbage pollution. That's one way of protecting our sea turtles as they mistake, especially plastic bottles, for jellyfish. So we reduce the amount of garbages that we throw out there. All these garbages end up washing into the sea and turtles mistake them for food. In our nesting season, we ask persons to change their lights that they use on the outside from bright lights or even turn them off because our turtles do mistake these lights for the light of the moon. Once we have hatchlings, that are coming from the nest, those are the young ones, they mistake these lights and they end up in the road. They even end up in areas where we're not able to rescue them and that cause death. We ask persons, even plastic cups, garbage bottles on a whole, tins do not throw them on the beaches because our hatchlings tend to go into these and end up dying because they are trapped. We also ask that fishermen pull their nets out of the sea after they're finished fishing because turtles end up getting trapped into these nets and are killed. Turtles do breathe air. That's things the persons don't know. They breathe air just like us humans. So they come up on top of the water in order to 
breathe. We need to also protect their habitats. So hawks bill for sure that we have here, they nest under vegetation. We ask persons to reduce cutting down these trees. So we have persons cutting down trees on the beaches. That's not good for our turtles. They were here before us and we would love for them to be here after us. They're very important creatures to us. They help clean even the waters that we tend to love to bathe in. We go to the beach and we want to swim. Turkles clean that, help to clean that water also. I have some videos to share, but they are proving me difficult. Can you give me a minute, please? Okay. So until Ms. Kamar joined us again, I just want to remind you guys to share with us your email address and any other contact information so that we can share our updates with you with any other sessions that we'll be having so we can send to you easily. And after the presentation, we will also have an evaluation form that will be sent to you for you to fill out and let us know how you guys found the presentation. And I do hope that you guys are taking notes and whatever questions you have, you can just write them down. And at the end of the presentation, you guys are free to ask your questions and I'm sure Ms. Kamar will answer you as best as possible. Are you able to see my presentation at this point? We're seeing the one that you were presenting before. Is it another one? No. Yes, so we're seeing the presentation then. Yes.
What is the Hawksbill sea turtle? Not particularly large compared to other sea turtles. We're hearing something, but we're not seeing anything. It's still on the PowerPoint. Pardon me, you're not seeing the presentation? We're not seeing the video. We're hearing a video, but we're not seeing it. It's still on the PowerPoint. Okay, let me try to. So probably you'll have to stop sharing the PowerPoint and then, yes, so we're seeing it now. Yes. Okay, thank you. Upper shell is heart-shaped and as they mature, it elongates. Their strikingly colored carapace is serrated and has overlapping skews or thick bony plates. The hawksbill turtle's tapered head ends in a sharp point resembling a bird's beak, hence its name. A further distinctive feature is a pair of claws adorning each flipper. Male hawksbills have longer claws, thicker tails, and somewhat brighter coloring than females. Hawksbills are named for their narrow, pointed beak. They also have a distinctive pattern of overlapping scales on their shells that form a serrated look on the edges. These colored and patterned shells make them highly valuable and commonly sold as tortoise shell in markets. Hawksbills are found mainly throughout the world's tropical oceans, predominantly in coral reefs. They feed mainly on sponges by using their narrow pointed beaks to extract them from crevices on the reef, but also eat sea anemones and jellyfish. Sea turtles are the living representatives of a group of reptiles that has existed on Earth and traveled our seas for the last 100 million years. They are a fundamental link in marine ecosystems and help maintain the health of coral reefs and seagrass beds. In an unexpected move, governments adopted strong decisions to help tackle the illegal trade of sea turtles and stop their rapid decline. Countries will work together to improve monitoring, detection, and law enforcement activities in coastal areas and trade points for this far-ranging species. At the same time, there must be increased accountability and oversight of fishing vessels in marine turtle landing sites. Lastly, DNA sampling is required to improve the traceability of illegal products and their origins, which will also help in monitoring illegal activity and population declines. Hawksbills help maintain the health of coral reefs. As they remove prey such as sponges from the reef's surface, they provide better access for reef fish to feed. They also have cultural significance and tourism value. For example, for local residents in the Coral Triangle, the flow of visitors who come to admire turtles is a vital source of income. Habitat and diet. Hawksbill turtles are found throughout the tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. They avoid deep waters, preferring coastlines where the sponges they like to feed on are abundant, and sandy nesting sites are within reach. These highly migratory reptiles help maintain a healthy coral reef ecosystem. Hawksbills are omnivorous and will also eat mollusks, marine algae, crustaceans, sea urchins, fish and jellyfish. Their hard shells protect them from many predators, but they still fall prey to large fish, sharks, crocodiles, octopuses, and humans. Reproduction. Like other sea turtles, hawks bills make incredible migrations in order to move from feeding sites to nesting grounds, normally on tropical beaches. Every two to five years, female hawksbills return to the beaches where they were born to nest, which normally takes place in shallow waters close to the shore. The nesting procedure begins when the turtles leave the sea to choose an area to lay their eggs. They dig a pit in the sand, fill it with 130 to 160 eggs, and then cover it. At this stage, the turtles retreat to the sea, leaving the eggs, which will hatch in about 60 days. The most dangerous time of their lives comes when hatchlings make the journey from their nests to the sea. Crabs and flocks of gulls voraciously prey on the young turtles during this short scamper.
threats to survival. Like many sea turtles, hawks' bills are critically endangered due mostly to human impact. Tortoise shells have been prized among humans since ancient Egypt and, with their stunning shells, hawks' bills are no exception. The International Union for Conservation Nature estimates that millions of hawks' bills have been killed within the last hundred years from the tortoise shell trade. Though the legal international hawks' bill shell trade ended in 1993, trade continues. Hawks' bill eggs are still eaten around the world despite the turtle's international protected status, and they are often killed for their flesh as well. These graceful sea turtles are also threatened by accidental capture in fishing nets. Habitat loss is another serious threat facing hawksbill turtles. Coastal development has reduced the space available for them to nest, while rising temperatures associated with global climate change is killing the coral reefs they rely on for food. Conservation? Hawksbill turtles are protected by international agreements like the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, CITES, and the Convention on Migratory Species. This level of international cooperation is essential to the conservation of hawksbills given their wide geographic range. Advocates are also working to protect the hawksbill turtles' habitats by designating them marine sanctuaries or aquatic preserves, while researchers like Photo Arctic fellow Daniel Ars are gathering data on hawksbill populations to help raise awareness among local communities and improve conservation strategies. The actual age that hawksbill sea turtles reach sexual maturity is unknown. Mating occurs roughly every two to three years mainly in shallow waters. Population usually begins near the shore. Hawksbills leave the water only during the breeding nest in the sand, typically near vegetation. The entire nesting process takes one to three hours. They clear the area and dig a pit in the sand. They lay their eggs in the pit then fill it with sand using their hind limbs. After the eggs are laid and buried, they immediately return to the sea. After about two months, the hatchling turtles emerge at night. The light reflected off the water from the sky guides them to the sea. These days, car headlights, street lamps, or lights on buildings near the beach cause some hatchlings to travel in the wrong direction. Waiting herons make fast meals of other hatchlings. Any babies still on the beach in the morning are easily picked off by predators or die in the hot sun. It is thought that when the surviving hatchlings reach maturity, they return to the beach where they hatched to lay their eggs. Like all turtles, the hard carapace of hawks' bills discourages predators. Adult turtles are still consumed by humans, sharks and occasionally crocodiles. Nests are commonly robbed by terrestrial predators such as dogs, raccoons, rats, mongooses and humans. Direct after hatching, hawksbill turtles make the journey to water. Although this trip only takes a few minutes, many hatchlings are preyed upon by various gulls, heron, and large crabs. The hawksbill turtle is one of the smallest species of turtle. It is characterized by a narrow, pointed beak in a beautiful patterned shell, and it inhabits the warm, tropical coastline waters of the world. Oceans, Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific and Indian Ocean as well. It's difficult to know precisely how many hawksbill turtles exist because, but research suggests that there are only five populations worldwide, made up of around 8,000 turtles in total, and with only 1,000 females nesting annually. Turtles leave the sea to lay their eggs on the beach. They will choose a spot, dig a hole, lay their eggs, cover them up, and return to the sea, leaving their eggs behind. The eggs will remain buried for around 60 days until they hatch. The sandy seabed provides them with perfect sites for nesting. Hawksbill turtles nest every two to three years and lay an amazing 60 to 200 eggs every nesting season. The beautiful hawksbill shell is tough and effective. Okay. 
So I'll move on. Why do we need to protect our sea turtles? Sea turtles play a vital role in maintaining the health of the world's ocean. These role ranges from maintaining productive coral reefs, ecosystems to transporting essential trends from the ocean to beaches and coastal dunes. If sea turtles were extinct, dune vegetations would be lost, a major source of nutrients and would not be as healthy and would not be strong enough to maintain the dunes, resulting in increasing erosions on our beaches. I think this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Mrs. Kamar, if I may call you Kamar. Thank you so much um, for your presentation. Sure. <laughs> It was informative and I did learn something, but I do have questions for you right here. I'm not sure if they're valid questions, but I'm still going to ask anyway. <laughs> All right, so. All questions are valid. For the, stu <laughs> for the students that are with us from um, Harper Tree Primary, I'm just going to ask these two questions because I probably think they would want to know. Are there any, any um, all, from all the turtles that you showed us, that you presented on today, are there, are there any that is in danger to Jamaica? Sure, so our hawks bill is actually critically endangered. endangered. Okay. Right. Um, also, is it legal for a child to have a turtle as a pet here in Jamaica? Well, I have had those que that question personally asked like every day. When we talk about turtles, we do not only have sea turtles, we also have lanterns. For land turtles, it mm -hmm. is okay, but okay. it is legal for you to have any possession of a sea turtle in your and anywhere in your yard anywhere so it's very illegal only persons are to have those in their possession are actually wardens and nepo representatives so legally it's a hundred thousand dollars fine for you to have any part of a turtle in your possession okay so um I think in the presentation, you mentioned that Persis uses the hawk's bill because it's very beautiful. So they use the shell for earrings and stuff, bracelets and stuff like that. Sure, yes, oh. that's so correct. <laughs> so that is illegal. They do it illegally. So for me, mm -hmm. I am actually a warden. Mm -hmm. So if I should catch any of these persons, even if they were not the ones who actually poached on the turtle and removed the shell and killed that turtle, if I should catch anyone with it, I will have to impose a charge on that person. So suppose, whether selling. So suppose I come at my house and see Camardo. Well, <laughs> I will have to impose a charge on you, but most cases, what I tend to do, I tend to educate persons ahead of time so persons are actually aware so we have an educational campaign that will begin on the first of june which is our nesting season also mm -hmm. so we kick off all activities there and the education campaign will tell persons what I not to do to and what that. not to have in their possession i was just about right. to ask that question but my last question is do you guys do um, have tours for schools? Yes, Any? we do offer tours. So as I said, our nesting season kicks off on the 1st of June. We will not begin offering tours until August because most of our tours for schools are actually day tours. 
So we will resume for schools in September, which is a good time to see, especially the hatchlings. Okay, and with the school, is there a maximum amount of persons that they can take on the tour, or it doesn't matter? Okay, for school, for school it, it all depends on how many kids are in the class. Mm -hmm. So I would not reduce the amount per class because I know that's difficult. So I allow a class of up to 30 persons to actually come on our tours. And how would they um, book a tour with you? So to book a tour, they can go on our Facebook page and message us through our Facebook, through mm -hmm. Instagram. And also we have a telephone number which is 304-7778. We also have an Instagram page as well. Three, can you repeat the number? 304-7778. Okay, then. All right. Okay, thank you so much. Also, All right. to add that... <laughs> okay, go ahead. You have a guest house... We do have a guest house for rental on property where we have a small natural history museum as well. So oh, persons so can stay overnight. Us? Sure, I do <laughs> want to. <laughs> yeah. okay. I do want to. So I think I have a number. I will call you <laughs> at a different time. Okay, but persons then. can stay and this summer promises to be very exciting for the Treasure Beach Circle Group. We'll have a professor from overseas coming to work with us. We have a lot of volunteers, a lot of high schoolers are on board. So it promises to be very exciting. Okay, then. All right. Thank you so much, Kamar, for joining us today. And You're thank welcome. you for your information because I learned something through your presentation and also about what you guys have to offer there at Treasure Beach. So I thank you so much for giving us the time, taking the time to be our presenter for today. And I do know that the students from Halfway Tree Primary and also our YouTube viewers, they have definitely learned something and enjoyed your presentation today. All right, so I just want to thank you on behalf of Natural History thank Museum of Jamaica you. for joining us today for our session. So guys, we will You're welcome. We will wrap up our presentation or session for today and I will continue to email you guys about our other sessions and I do hope that you guys will be able to participate in our future sessions. All right, thank you so much, Half a Tree Primary, for joining us today. Mrs. Carol O'Connor Clark, thank you so much for sitting in with the students and joining us today. And also our viewers on YouTube, thank you, thank you, thank you for your regular support. Do have yourself a wonderful day today. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can end.